the train. I've, I've... There it is. <laughs> Let me just put these windows up. Oh, a little bit of train. Oh, that was like just an engine. Cool. All right, we're good. Actually, kind of nice. Yeah, a little bit of train Jeez. in the back. Roger Waters the wall. Choo choo. choo, choo. <laughs> you know when that train hits the stage at the beginning of the show. <laughs> <laughs> This is the best show ever. This is the best show ever. This is the best show, the best show ever. This is the best show. Best show I ever heard. I think I have to agree. And welcome to Best Show Ever Pod, the podcast where I interview people about the best concert they ever saw in their life. Um, I'm Cam Hurt, I'm your host, um, and I have got a really cool guest this week. And that intro that you just listened to is a little sneak preview into who it is. Um, it's none other than Goose's own Jeff Arevalo. Um, super lucky to have Jeff on the podcast. Um, Jeff has played some awesome shows. We talk a little bit about the awesome shows that he's played with Goose, but that's not what this podcast is about. This podcast is about the awesome shows that you've seen, and so that's what we get into with Jeff, some of the coolest shows that he's got to attend. Um, really great conversation with Jeff that, as you can see, was being interrupted it every way possible, honestly. Uh, my Wi-Fi went out a bunch of times. There was a train going through where Jeff was. I had a cat in my apartment that wanted to be a part of the conversation. Uh, there, there was a lot going on um, that tried to stop this conversation from happening. But you can't stop this conversation from happening. Uh, it happened anyway, and it was a great one. I wish I could have talked to him all day. Uh, but enough intro from me. Uh, sit back, relax, enjoy this uh, great conversation that I have with Jeff from Goose. But first... Here's a little bit of music from none other than Jesus and Fartfinger. This is the best show ever. This is the best show ever. This is the best show, the best show ever. This is the best show. The best show I ever heard. I think I have to agree. If a train comes, we may have to pause or uh, just ride out the train, you know? Well, that's cool. I I've got a cat. Um, I've got my girlfriend's cat in the room with me, too, who's been kind of, like, pretty excited about the episode. And so I think maybe he's going to be – he'll be yelling a little bit so we can stop for the cat. We can stop for the train. It'll be a four-hour episode. It'll be good. Here we go. Yeah. Cool, man. What's <laughs> been up? What, what have you been up to? You know? Uh, touring? Yeah. And then uh, straight into the studio. So I had like a Sunday off after Levitate, which was nice, you know. Nice day, single day off. I say one single 24-hour day. I'm sure you got all the rest you needed in for that. Yeah, I'm good for like another six, eight months. You there know? we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy summer you guys had and just a crazy touring schedule coming up. I mean... You guys are like really cranking out a lot of shows. You got to, you know, strike while the iron's hot, I guess. Dude, the iron is so hot right now and you guys are striking. So uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough to catch one of those shows. But yeah, I mean, just a lot of a lot of cool shows for you guys this summer. Has there been any um, any like spots along the road that you get respite at or like you feel like you got some good rest at? Um, This this past tour was actually the easiest in certain ways, in my opinion, because we had like, I don't know, I think it was 17 days and like 12 shows. So five off days. And we had uh, we had a good number of like hotel rooms. We usually just sleep on the bus. Um, so it was like, you know, more off days and more hotels. So in a way it was like kind of the easiest tour right. in my opinion i feel like uh you messaged me at one point i was saying how a show was super hot one night and you're like yeah we feel really relaxed right now and so do you feel like that plays into it having extra hotel rooms and that kind of stuff yeah i think definitely just getting a little more rest and then just like you know 
playing more and more often and like not not stopping you know i felt like i felt like chicago was kind of a warm up show that one didn't feel super tight to me um but you know when you take like 3 weeks off or something it's like it takes a couple shows to get back into the thing but if you never stop i think you can you can stay hot to a certain degree oh that's i mean that's certainly true in comedy you know i feel like when i was living in chicago we had eight shows a week you know i was doing two shows some nights and now living in la there's just you know there's a little less there's less spots you know there's less um stage time and so i feel cold when i go up after not going up literally the night before you know and yeah. so um yeah i think yeah keeping the keeping it loose and practicing every day probably makes things easier but listen we're not you you've played a lot of cool shows you played a, you, radio city you just packed out spec but we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about shows that you've seen Ooh, we're talk about yeah, yes your, your best shows and so um we'll get into the best show you ever saw in your life and all that kind of stuff but um i kind of like to start off with your your first show and your worst show do you have a so like what was the first concert you ever saw in your life so it's pretty cool um it's it's kind of funny like I'm sort of a a late bloomer musically um and I say that's funny because my brothers my older brothers a professional musician and my dad my dad always had music playing in the house and it was kind of a weekend warrior he was in the restaurant business but um hey same got, yeah my parents owned a restaurant yeah oh so you you, you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so like I didn't see my dad a ton until he quote unquote retired because he was you know he was working a franchise and running 30 stores or whatever i Man. saw him uh i saw him on sundays for like you know church and maybe some disc golf that's so funny it was the same exact thing in my house sundays was like uh the day where he was definitely not going to work and my my mom and dad owned the place together and so they were both working at the restaurant every single day of the week and so were me and my little brother so I know that well. Yep. Um, so I said I was a late bloomer. I I started playing guitar when I was like third grade, so like seven or eight. And I learned I had this Red K electric and a little nine volt uh, powered five watt Fender amp or whatever. And I learned three chords, A, D, and E. And I played what? I played Wild Thing and I tried out for the talent show and they wanted me to open up for my rivals. And I was like, I am not an opening act. <laughs> and, and, I, and I quit playing guitar. I went back to being a kid um, for like almost 10 years. And then I, I got my drum set around 15 and, and took off with that. But um, I didn't see a lot of shows. I mean, other than like seeing my, my brother's band play or my dad's band play. I didn't go to like a real concert until I was like 17 and I went to I went to Bonnaroo in 2005 and wow. the first set I saw was Allison Krauss in Union Station nice. at like at like noon on Friday and the, the the grass was still green around the stage and the light was perfect and there was like a hundred people there but you know, it was Jerry Douglas, Ron Block, Dan Taminsky, like the whole band, and it was it was really inspiring. Man, that's all. I mean, were you? Uh, was that a show? Like, I feel like that's a show, especially a festival set. You go in and you maybe know you know some of the music, but then afterwards you're like, man, I really wish I knew more of that music, or like now I have some new songs that I really like from that band because festival sets seem to do that to me. Definitely, and I. I went in, you know, knowing the band and the players, especially um, Jerry Douglas uh, on the Dobro. Um, yeah. But I didn't, I don't know all the songs. Um, and I feel like I, I love that. I, I was going to get into this later, but I, I love listening to music that I don't know. It's yeah. like, that's what I do. And, and you know, fuck spotify for like not paying artists or whatever but 
Right. I love I love my Discover Weekly, my release radar. I love just putting it on random and and listening to stuff I've never heard and getting new ideas instead of like replaying the same song I've heard, you know, a million times. Yeah. And it's and then when you get to go check it out live and see how they arrange it and see how yep. they're gonna be different. Yeah, super inspiring. Um, I'm sure. Um, cool. Well, I mean, <laughs> not to put down. You don't have to put down any artist at this moment, but what yeah, was yeah. The, what was the worst concert you ever saw? Yeah, and and I thought about this, and I'm not gonna name any names. Sure. But uh, I went to. It was like a festival last year, hmm. and um, you know, I'm aware of this band. And whatnot and i really like one of their songs and um it just wasn't doing it for me like was it paul mccartney no it wasn't it wasn't paul <laughs> um the you know the drum the drums were interesting and the and the guitars were doing doing whatever and i feel like the the singers like this the melodies weren't really grabbing me and he was kind of singing low and it didn't really stand out and then i just I left the festival. I was gonna like stick around and see the headliner I wanted to see, but the set was like so uninspiring to me that I was like, "Let's get out of here." Had um, to remove yourself. Yeah, I just, I just laughed. Yeah. So I'd say that's the that's the worst set. Listen, there. You know, I don't know who the artist was, but there could have been someone in that crowd that night that's like, "This is the best." Totally. Ever played. You know, it just totally. Happened happened to be that night for you so and a festival set is tough sometimes um sometimes yeah. you go in like um in milwaukee we had Summerfest. that was the big like oh yeah you know. i've played that no way <laughs> what, what year so maybe oh seven or something dickie Betts and great southern played my my brother was the bass player and that was actually the one time i got to get on stage and play some percussion with them wow and it was at a shed cool. it was at a shed at Summerfest. nice was it the maybe the potawatomi stage that's kind of that's shed. that sounds about right yeah nice definitely potawatomi bingo and casino well that's i mean <laughs> that's that was like christmas for us in milwaukee and you would you know look at the lineup and get really excited and you know it's like eight nights or sometimes 11 nights of music mm -hmm. and so there's tons of sets and there's just bound to be someone who you wanted to go see that is either having a tough time on a tour or like, you know, playing old stuff that they don't have any new stuff or whatever it is. And yeah, there's yep. been a couple of sets where I'm like, well, I don't, what's going on right now? Um, <laughs> it'll, it'll, it's going to happen. Um, it's a, it's a very different thing. You know, I, uh, I, I love and hate festival sets. I mean, uh, you know, it's fun because, you know, they like, they rush you on. You may not get a sound check or whatever. You play your set and then they rush you out. And it's yeah. like, all right, you may have 45 minutes or an hour, two hours if you're like a headliner. But, you know, it's not it's not your show. You have very little control, like, over the production. Mm -hmm. And and so, like, production can, can you know, lack or slack or, or slide because there's so many moving parts and it depends on like, you know, who's the house stage manager, who's the production manager, like what is going on. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's a rush cause they could have, you know, six acts on that stage or whatever. And it's, it's just, uh, so it's fun, but it's, it's also like, it's hard to play your best when in those conditions. Yeah. And I'm sure at this point, I mean, you guys have been touring for so long at this point that I'm, you know, no matter who the stage manager is or whether things are perfect or not perfect, I'm sure there's a level of like, we're going to do what we're going to do. You know, like totally. this, this is our set. And no matter if the stage manager's pissed at us or if, you know, <laughs> the, you know, the trailer sucks or whatever's going on, like we're going to, we're going to do a goose set, but um, yep. it's hard to lo like block everything out, you know? Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Man. Would love to see you guys at a festival. I'm I'm glad I got a just a goose set, but as some some of these festival sets over the summer have looked like a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, a uh, lot this year, like fifteen or sixteen festivals this year. Yeah, a lot. 
they should really pick it up next year. I think maybe like 150 festivals would be good. Now you're talking. You know, just do every like, day, every single day of the year, always a festival set. I think that'd be good for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of growth. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard to pick one best show that you've ever seen. Um, and so I like to do honorable mentions on here too. Do you have some shows that you would be remiss that you did, wouldn't bring up? Um, some like honorable mention best shows? So there's so many sort of like criteria, I think on what, on what makes a best show. Like, was it the band? Was it the lights? Was it the singer? Did they play your favorite song? Were you yes. with good company? Did you have good drugs? Like, yes. Was it your anniversary? Like, there's so many things. So it's it's really hard. Um, but last year, you know, I, I think I already said this online or whatever. But like, it was great to see Weezer. Oh it man, was, they they crushed. So much respect for those guys. I mean, they're just throwing it down. They are just a really good band. Um, I've seen them has been one of the best shows I've ever seen. And the first time I ever saw them is within my top three for sure. Best mm -hmm. shows. I, I mean, I love Weezer. Yeah. They just next level rivers. Uh, holy cow. Blew me away. Uh, seeing the, seeing the peppers, red hot chili peppers. Dude, Got to yeah. see them twice at ACL last year. Man. Holy. I mean, just like Chad and flea just fucking, it was like the loudest most beautiful bass I've ever heard. It was incredible. Um, those guys uh, getting to see Tool. I mean, that kind of that kind of blew my mind at Bonnaroo. Um, and one more. I mean, seeing back to my first show, seeing Allison Krause yeah. with Robert Plant again. This is the second time I've seen him, and it's just uh, I love I love their their vibe and what they're doing it's and and that's like totally different from the other three like rock bands i mentioned there, there's a lot of difference within all all of those groups mm -hmm. i mean red hot chili peppers to tool is a huge jump and tool tool to alice and kraus is a huge jump i mean yeah that's a, a wide array but um i mean anything from those shows like any memorable moments that because you're you're so right that's why we're doing the show i mean it could yeah. be that you're your best friend. It could be that you were around the best people. It could be that you met the band, whatever it is. Yeah. It could be like signifying a time of your life or growth or whatever. But mm -hmm. anything, like in those shows, any one of those shows that was like, I mean, seeing the Peppers twice at ACL, that had to be, you know, like feel significant in some way, you know? Totally. I mean, volume was one thing, the power. <laughs> The, the the tone of Flea's bass at that volume was kind of like, holy shit. Um, but, uh, I mean, when they kick into the fucking chorus of Californication, you're just like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're like, I get it. This is it. It's such a, I mean monumental band for our lifetime i mean they've yeah. literally been as long as we can remember music yeah. they've been putting out really really great music and so um yeah i i've i've yet to see them my parents have seen them like twice and i haven't seen them so. blew me away i mean are you when you're going to these shows are you going solo or do you have a crew that you go with are you going with the goose guys or so i think I mean, all four of the sets I just mentioned were at festivals that we were playing. Yeah. And so, I mean, there was there was a bunch of us. Like, right. usually the band, the band and the tour manager is able to like, you know, go to front of house or whatever, um, or or watch side stage, which is not the best sound unless you just want to hear drums. Um, yeah. um. Yeah. So a bunch of us. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. I mean, yeah, you guys have gotten to play some really cool festivals and to get alongside some of those those acts that have been running that long, like like Tool and, and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Does that kind of provide some sort of inspiration for you guys? Are you guys like, man, look at these dudes still playing together? Totally. I mean, the one of the first things I noticed about Weezer, and that was that was at the Beale Street Music Fest, was 
they are so fucking tight. Yeah. Like, yes. so fucking tight. And, you know, they've been playing together for, for 30 years or whatever. Like, and they're still like, ah. Oh. Like yeah. They're, they're, they're playing like they fucking mean it. And they're together. And that was, uh, and then Rivers, like, he sang his ass off. And then his leads, like, really, I was like, holy shit. Like, he, it's great to see people that just keep getting better. I'm, I'm sure it's a level of, like, they get to stay so tight because they're having so much fun. I mean, every single time I've seen them, there's been some sort of, like, bit or comedy aspect to the show. Um, and the, the first time I saw them was nuts. They, uh, you know the song, We Are All On Drugs? We are all on drugs. <laughs> Not by Never name. But <laughs> giving enough. <laughs> Great song. Um, he came out. Uh, it was in Milwaukee. It was at the Eagles ballroom. He's got like a bottle of Patron in his hand. And okay. he's like taking pulls from the bottle of Patron. And, and he's like taking really big swigs from it. And like like running down the side of his mouth swigs from it. And we're in Milwaukee and, you know, people, dr people love drinking in Milwaukee. So people are like, yeah, you know, <laughs> loving it. Um, but he's like starting to slur his words and like keeps taking really big pulls from it. And, you know, people are, the crowd is kind of like losing it a little bit. They're like, what, why is he drinking so hard? And he like stumbles back and falls over and passes out on the stage. Um, and two like two guys two stage hands come out and take him out and pick him up and you know the band is like hey we're so sorry um you know that usually doesn't happen rivers isn't like that and so um we're gonna play some covers for you guys and we'll see how he's feeling um if you guys don't mind and they they go into like a lady gaga song um oh my god <laughs> you know uh they're just you know they're they're singing the lyrics a little bit they're kind of like looking around and then at the Eagles ballroom, there's these like, um, there's these like boxes up along near the stage, um, balcony boxes and Rivers like pops up in one of the balcony boxes and he's got a blonde wig on and he's singing the, you know, the chorus to the Lady Gaga song. And he, he was kidding the whole time. It was all a bit, he, he was just drinking water. He was totally fine. Oh he had not God. passed out. And the place just like exploded, dude. I mean, yeah, I feel like I went to I went to that show on like a Wednesday during high school by myself, and I was just like, "Wait, Wait there's the best band of all time!" Oh man, um, yeah, I was loving it. Um, they're such a good band; they have so much fun. Yes, they uh, they opened with Van Halen's "Jump," and um, wow. I don't think we were like we weren't out front yet, and I thought they were playing like the record through the PA. It sounded so yeah. good. They also played Sandman um, by Metallica. And like, I don't know if Metallica has ever played it that good. Like, I no offense, no offense, James and the guys, but like, holy shit. They really, I mean, again, having fun. They will just pick a cover and then just play it so well. They did that Africa cover a while ago. Yeah. That one was like playing all the time. And it's so good. It is yeah. almost almost as good or better than the Toto version. And I, I'm not yep. going to search Toto, okay? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, those are some really good honorable mentions. Those are those are some solid shows. But it's time for the main the main course, the main thing. Um, what, is, what is the best show you've ever seen in your life? So it, uh, this was really easy because I know it and and it's like it's my go-to and I don't know when it's gonna get topped and um, you know if you don't like it I'm sorry you feel that way because you're wrong um, <laughs> it was Roger Waters the Dude. wall live Dude. 2009 TD garden unbelievable unbelievable Here say that here's the like they had an airplane they built the wall yes i, I went to that dude i went that, to that with my dad yeah it was incredible gosh um, just the the production the the music um you know all the all the props the wall three lead guitarists yeah um, they had doyle bramble if you know who that is and then yep. stormy 
And then I should have looked his name up. The other guy that plays bass and guitar, um, three lead guitarists. They had the children's choir at the end, like just everything. It was, it was absurd. We were like ninth row. Um, my good friend, Andy Wallace used to play keyboards, uh, played keyboards with Roger. And he like, we, we were, we were at, we were at, uh, Berkeley at the time. And, um, he just like, he hit up Harry Waters and like got wow. us two tickets in the ninth row. And, uh, it was just un unbelievable. I mean, it's, uh obviously all the production value and, and the songs and the presentation of an album that is just so iconic but getting that um getting that ticket from the inside you know and being able to like you know do something cool um that that totally adds to the best show ever and the the, the guitar the guitarists like yeah man uh, it was like who who's better i mean it was it was just unreal i remember doyle just just blowing blow me away. So look up Doyle Bramall if you don't know who he is. You get that solo and during Comfortably Numb where, you know, whoever's taking that solo that night, whether it's Snowy White or, or whoever it was, is standing on top of the wall. And I mean, yeah, I, we're huge Floyd fans in our house. And so that was already kind of like ingrained in me anyway. But even if you don't know the songs, I mean, that that uh, that show will blow you away. I mean, the every brick in the wall is a screen, you know, and like yeah. they're showing all of the different graphics over the thing. The the art from back in the day is incredible, but they've like revamped it to this new, uh, I mean, yeah. Roger Waters is such an incredible show. Anyone who he's going to have tour with him is going to be, you know, one of the most impressive musicians that you can go see, um, especially when they get to do that. Um, that sort of music. Yeah. Uh, were you a big Pink Floyd fan? Is that a, something you grew up? I mean, everyone does, but. Yeah, I, I was a big fan. I wouldn't say that like, you know, they probably, they weren't in my top three, but like, you know, I don't know. They're, they're, they're such a like household staple. Yeah. You know? I mean, who doesn't know those songs? Um, it's you know it's crazy we i i had an episode with my dad um that that was one of my episodes and his his number one show ever is the original presentation of the wall in the 80s uh 1980 and he saw it out here in la and as soon as you said roger waters the wall i was like no way dude i mean i'm glad, <laughs> that, I'm glad that we're getting another chance to talk about pink floyd and and that go. and that stuff because um yeah it's so incredible um and if you, it, it, you know, for people listening, if you get a chance to go see him, do it. Or if, if you get a chance to see David Gilmour, I don't know if you've got a chance to see David Gilmour. Um, the other side of Pink Floyd, less production value, you know, stripped down stage, kind of just one screen, but equally powerful yeah. presentation of Floyd music. I mean, yeah, those guys are incredible to go see. Geniuses. Geniuses. Hell yeah. Um, well, Jeff, I mean... Thanks so much for being on the pod, man. I, I, it, is there, is there anything coming up that you're really looking forward to? Is there anyone that you're seeing coming up that you're looking forward to? Um, I mean, we're going, we're going to Folk Fest, Newport Folk Fest. Cool. Uh, next weekend. Um, Gregory Allen Isaacoff, real excited to see him. Right. Um, some other groups that I'm forgetting right now. Um, past that end of August is Beach Road Weekend, Martha's Vineyard. Wow. Bon, bon Iver's there and Leon Bridges. Uh, I'm a huge Leon fan, huge Bone fan, Justin Vernon. Uh, big inspiration to, to the band and especially to Rick. Um, but I, I got to catch Leon, Leon Bridges set at Jazz Fest and it was, it delivered. It delivered okay. the goods man does he have the pipes I mean. yeah and the band was so groovy and one of my um old friends emily albert was playing guitar uh cool. with him from berkeley so that was cool to see um yeah those are the 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 next acts there's more remy wolf's gonna be at newport oh. folk there's other bands camp i want to see uh said gregory 
I'm forgetting. Billy Strings, obviously. Um, uh, who the hell else is there? Some, some other great artists. It's got to be cool for you guys. I mean, I'm sure this is happening for for your friends as well, for um, you know the guys that are in Goose. But it's got to be exciting seeing friends um, moving along and doing these big tours and um, seeing them on big stages because you know how good of a musician they are um, and how much they put into it. So it's got to be cool to watch that payoff happening. Yeah, and uh, there's two things I wanted to add. Like, you know. I, I've been in Goose for three years now, and I'm so grateful and honored to to be on on the stage and stuff. It was it was it was hard for me, you know, six seven years ago when I was just down in Florida, like still gigging in bars and whatever, yeah. and like seeing like all the people I went to school with, you know, doing doing the damn thing, and yeah. I was like, I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I want that. I want to do yeah. that. And I'm so grateful that, that that we're out here doing it now. Um, and I, I forgot to mention, and and uh, you know, y- you and your listeners would probably dig this. Um, I'm gonna go see Fish at the Garden twice. Whoa. Twice. Whoa, and dude! This is a big deal for me. Um, you know, because even though I know Trey and we got to we got to tour together, um, I've only seen Fish one time. And um, it's it's pretty cool. It's part of the history. It was SPAC 10 years ago to the day Man. That, that we played there. Vasudo did that after party and Great Blue was playing in the parking lot. Yeah. And that that's the only time I've seen Fish live was 10 years ago. So now I get to experience it at the Garden twice. So I'm very excited. Well, I mean, have fun at those shows. I, I'm, th- this will come out after those shows. So we'll be, we'll be talking about how much fun you had. Um, All right later on but i mean yeah i mean it, this seems a little cliche and almost like duh to ask but that's got to just be so surreal man um <laughs> being at spec and looking across that lawn and um seeing people having fun at fish and then now you know you're sitting behind your your drums looking at spec from the stage that that's got to be such a cool moment dude it was it was really cool and it you know i wish uh i wish i remembered more of it um that night 10 years ago you know it was dark it was wet and rainy i remember having like the worst chicken fingers of my life (laughs) and then kind of like standing there in the mud like looking down and like to be honest i didn't really get it then yeah Um, we didn't stay for very long so now like you know and then playing was totally different because i couldn't even like i couldn't even really see the stage from where we were i think yeah Um, right playing it was surreal but now I'm excited to like see them. Uh, you know, everybody talks about how they just really transform the garden into, you know, an aquarium, if you will, or or, or whatever they're gonna do with it. Nice. Um, so. I see what you did there with the fish uh-huh. aquarium. That was good. Uh-huh. Pretty sharp. Pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't gotten to see him at MSG, and it almost feels like I haven't seen him because people get so people are so sacred about yeah. these shows um i guess i gotta move to the east coast i don't know what i'm doing hey we'll see you at the will turn that's right see if so you'll see me at the will turn you'll see me in santa barbara all right shit i might just hit that whole tour what am i what am i thinking? yeah dude well thanks <laughs> so much jeff i mean uh such a big goose fan so i mean so cool of you to come on and and do the the app with me and and you've done a lot of cool shows but hey you've seen a lot of cool shows too now we know. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. Of course, dude. Um, that was the best show ever. That was the best show ever. That was the best show, the best show ever. That was the best show. Man, there was fucked up stuff in there. Yeah, what the fuck was that about? Well, that was a little bit of music from Jesus and Fartfinger, but also a really great conversation uh, with Jeff from Goose. We had so much fun talking. Like I said, I wish I could have talked to Jeff all day. He's a super nice guy, super kind for coming on. I uh, have a billion more questions for him, honestly, but um, I'll just have to save that for when I see him out on tour, hopefully. Um, 
definitely go see Goose. They've got a lot of shows coming up uh, through the fall, um, and they are awesome live. Listen, I've been sold on Goose, and if you're not and you listen to this podcast, good for you for listening all the way through. That's really nice. Um, and go see them live. They're great. You gotta go see Jeff in action, dude. You don't get to. You, you don't know those gong hits until you're in the building, and you feel them. That's it's a, a whole different experience. But um, if you like this conversation, there's a whole bunch more that are coming out. I've released at the same time as this one that came out. There's an interview with my dad where we actually talk about the original Wall um, and that tour. Listen to that episode too. It's a great conversation that I've had a thousand times with my dad, but now we have it recorded and you can listen to it and it's great. Um, We've got a whole bunch more coming out. They'll be coming out every single Tuesday. Look out for them on Osiris Media. Uh, but until next time, guys, have a great show. Cam. Come on back. Cam. You there?